Hey everybody, today is going to be something kind of funny. I have been thinking about doing, I, I watched one of the videos that I did, the very first one that I did on And Just Like That, that got like 40,000 views. It's, the thing is so uh, popular, it's incredible. <laughs> but here's the problem. I don't agree with what I said, <laughs> hardly at all. And I watched it back the other day and I was like, shit. I said a bunch of stuff in here that I now think is not true. So now I'm going to have to argue with myself. So let's watch this again with now my comments on it, looking back about how wrong I was about some of this stuff. And I just want to preface it by saying at the time I was recording this, this was episode seven, I was still holding out some like small bit of hope that they were going to turn this around. And I was trying to enjoy it. Now that we know what we know, Let's see what I got wrong. Um, don't forget to check out the merch store. It's in the, dis I've linked it in the description. It's definitely um, something you should check out if you would like to get a wine cooler or a mug. I survived and just like that with YouTube group therapy. And seriously, people, I wouldn't have survived this without you. Also in the description, please check out uh, where I am on another platform just in case they um, get rid of me. So let's, let's listen to what I had to say back then. This show is called And Just Like That. And... I will say that the one thing that has been bothering me is that throughout this entire seven episodes now, we have not seen Carrie Wright until this very moment, episode seven. She's finally back in front of her computer and she's finally writing. And I have found this to be so uh, unbelievable that Carrie was not writing anything and that she's on this awful cringeworthy podcast. Writers write. That's what they do. And the idea that Carrie... Yeah, okay, I agree with all of this. Let's get to the part that I don't agree with. You guys have heard this all before. Uh, a joker, terrible hair, still agree with that. Okay, now we're going to get to one of the first parts that I disagree with myself. So upset with them for making her look like this because she still does upset. not look that old and that terrible. But they're making her look that way and it's so bizarre. All right. Anyway, then Charlotte and her new friend LTW, who actually is one of my favorite new characters. I love LTW. She's funny. They're playing tennis. They're super into it. This is what they do now. Okay, stop. The tennis scene is so stupid. And I was just kind of like glancing past it because who cares? It's just Charlotte and LTW playing tennis. But I don't even have the screenshots in here of the people they were playing. They were playing like two little old ladies. <laughs> like, little old ladies and pretending to like beat them soundly, you know, like it was some sort of big accomplishment when these ladies were probably like close to 15 to 20 years older than them. And they were also, by the way, playing Eye of the Tiger during this. I didn't find it funny at all. It was just annoying. And, and what I said at the time was, okay, this is fine. It's what they do. All right. I mean, but it, it, it wasn't entertaining. I do still like F, um, LTW. I think that she could have been an interesting character. She was kind of at least well-dressed, um, but they just never went anywhere with her. So who cares? So what else do I disagree with? Uh, so Charlotte's making friends and LTW is a, f she's funny. Right, so no, the scene was dumb. It was dumb. Look at how they're like, yeah, we won against like two senior citizens. Like, come on, you guys. And uh, we go to the farmer's market and Miranda is waiting for Steve and she's screaming at him. OK, well, I agree with everything I said here about Miranda and Steve. There is nothing here that I don't agree with myself on. <laughs> so we can skip past this part because it was so bad. Poor Steve. Justice for Steve. They sure made him out to be. Oh, no, I have to sit through commercials. What? What? No, no commercials. Sorry, I have to just. Wait till this leaves. Spanx. All right. So the seam is in the empty chair. Like, I didn't really care about that. It still bought. All right. We get back to the tennis club. Let's get back there because the tennis club. Okay. So let's hear what I had to say about Harry and Charlotte here. And I forgot to mention that this was the scene where they're making midnight toast. Has anyone ever heard of midnight toast? I mean, Janet Real House Recaps now has an entire podcast named Midnight Toast. None of us know what the hell Midnight Toast is. This is not a thing. Let's hear what I'm um, saying about it. Uh, more of a role. So now they're playing tennis and there's this weird. All right. So, yeah, Charlotte, she, uh, she, this is where she trips uh, um, Harry. Thing where Charlotte trips him. He falls down and she doesn't even say she's sorry. 
And then she goes into this whole feminist rant about how she should not have to say sorry. Women say sorry too much. <clears throat> and it's ridiculous. If you knock your husband over and you have to help him to get him up, you should say, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean to knock you over. And I don't know why they made this big fight, but they did make a funny thing happen here where stop. No, it wasn't funny at all. Nope. Nope. This is again, where <laughs> watching it back, I am now like, this is not funny. It's just stupid. And Kristen Davis's extreme overreaction and overacting in this scene, I mean, you can see it on every screenshot. It's just out of control with her saying, I will not apologize. Like who would act like this? No one. It's not funny. It's just stupid and embarrassing. Charlotte and Harry are, end up having this public fight on the street in front of their new friends. And then Charlotte says, oh no, now we're those couple, you know, those people who fight in the street and it, they're all embarrassed and it's, it's funny. No, it's uh, not because... funny. It's not funny. Me. I'm arguing with <laughs> past me saying it's not funny. I don't know why I thought, you know why I thought it was funny? I thought it was funny because it was the only thing that didn't disgust me about this series. And so because I was feeling not disgusted, I mistook that for humor. But it, it, it really is bad writing and it's not funny at all. Let's let's hear what past me is going to make more mistakes about now. Then towards the end of the episode, it comes back around that everybody is those people. Like at some point, you're going to fight with your husband in the street. Well, that's true. You are. <laughs> Trust me. And I and the only redeeming part about this storyline in the show was that it was harken back to old Sex in the City, how they would bring something up in the beginning, and then by the end they would circle back and you'd see it in a different way. So it had a continuity at least. Um, in but it was a stupid story. Who trips their husband, makes him fall and hurt himself, and doesn't say sorry? Like no one does this. Like absolutely, they couldn't have come up with a better. Um, thing for them to argue over. You know what would have been better? If they were arguing over her not wanting him to come play tennis, because she didn't. She didn't want him to come play. She wanted it to just be her thing with her girlfriend. That's what they should have been arguing about. Arguing about this is just nonsense. So let's hear what past me is going to make more mistakes about. So this was actually a funny scene. No, it wasn't. And I don't think I've laughed throughout this entire series until this episode. So maybe things are looking up, but I really <laughs> no, don't think there's any things, saving. No, things are not looking up. No, they were not looking up. And back then, look how positive I was. Look, I was so positive. I was like, oh, maybe, maybe it's going to get better. And that's why I was laughing because I was like, okay, well, if this is the best I'm going to get, I'm going to get some enjoyment out of it. No. All right. Let's hear what else I have to say it at this point i'm just saying uh it's but this up uh, this uh this scene was uh funny and no, i did wasn't. get a good laugh out of it it wasn't funny so at least there's that and i did and not then, get it. oh god oh good god this is so bad no no so miranda my who, eyes my eyes we have to skip past this everything i said about this i stick by if you want to see everything i said about it you can go back to this video which i will link in the description good god look at these screenshots no no thank you I agree with what I said about her in that outfit and that stupid jacket that's keeping us from seeing that great dress. I agree with everything I said about this until we get about here. Um, whatever her name is, LTW and her husband are doing this auction and she keeps forgetting to put the microphone up to her face. It's a funny moment. He keeps telling her, would you please put the microphone All right. up? That was, so now we're starting. That was slightly amusing. I, I will say it was slightly amusing. I'm not going to say it was a funny moment. It was slightly amusing. Old me was just being too too gracious starting to see that this perfect couple also gets annoyed with one another which is funny i would actually watch a show about these two They're no i wouldn't nope in retrospect <laughs> i would not watch a show about these two uh we don't know enough about them nothing they have no personality really and no i wouldn't so let's skip on i agree with everything i said about this terrible dress and this terrible hair. I'm sorry that you guys like the dress. This was a dress that should have been on Charlotte, not on Carrie. It made her look like the wife of a politician, and I hated it. Uh, I hated her hair. And if I never see Che Diaz again, it'll be too soon. I'm sure I agree with everything I said about all of this. Um, so we don't need to revisit it. What else? What else? Oh, okay. Here's more I guess I just totally disagree with myself about what I said about Charlotte and Harry and LTW and her husband, because as I was watching this, I was cringing, listening to myself say that this was funny. It wasn't funny. 
No. So let's hear what old me says that's super cringeworthy. And <laughs> and Harry and Charlotte walk in, and this is very funny. No. Because now they have been those people in front that's of Harry and Charlotte, funny. too. So this is a fun thing. It's a, it's funny. This was one of the, the only times during this uh, whole series that I think I got a kick out of it. This was, yeah, because you know why? Because they weren't grossing me out. This was also the same episode that I had just been traumatized by Steve and Miranda in the kitchen where he forgets how to finger his wife. I was still traumatized by that scene. So anything that wasn't traumatizing me came off as nervous <laughs> laughter, maybe. But no, this actually wasn't funny. It was actually really stupid with the overacting and the look at Harry backing up like he's. Like, what is he doing? Is this a vaudeville act? I, I don't know, but it's not funny. And I'm, 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 I'm disregarding everything I said previously. And I can't believe, and it makes me mad that this video got so many views because there are people out there now who think I thought this was funny. And in retrospect, after I've come down off the trauma, I do not find this funny. I just think it's a reaction of the trauma we were experiencing with the rest of this freaking show. All right, continuing on, old me again. Kind of harken back to old Sex in the City where there would be these dichotomies of things happening and it would, you know, one thing that happened earlier in the episode would come back on somebody else. Okay, well, that was what I was saying about the continuity aspect. That was the only good thing about this is that there was a, some continuity about the uh, storyline. Um, so let's see, was there anything else? No, I think those were the major things in this video that I really now disagree with myself on. Everything else in it, I still agree uh, that the rest of it, the rest of my assessment. But for sure, like now I know, I now I know what happened. The only reason why I found that that shit funny was because this happened. And and in the episode before this, we were traumatized with the fingering scene in the other kitchen with Che. And so anything that wasn't that was pleasant by comparison. So I just had to get that off my chest because I rewatched this the other day and I was like freaking horrified that I had said that those things were funny. Cause no, they're, they're not funny. They're not funny at all. And, and I'm sorry that there's like video of me out there saying they were funny. And I now disavow everything I said. <laughs> this show is so crazy. That it's made me argue with myself. That's, that's a whole new level. Don't forget to check out the merch in the store. It's in the description uh, linked below. If we get to 10,000 subscribers, I'll be able to have my own YouTube store right on YouTube. Wouldn't that be fun? And we're, we're steadily getting there. So don't forget to like and subscribe. It makes a big difference when you like and subscribe. And don't forget, and I keep forgetting to say this in every video that I've done this week, book club. Book club is on Friday. In fact, Let's go over to, so I can show you, I am reading um, Sex in the City uh, by Candace Bushnell every Friday at 5 p.m. on this channel. I'm trying to figure out how to get, how do I get back here? No, I guess I can't. Okay, well, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm reading Sex in the City by Candace Bushnell, and I'm reading it a chapter at a time, and we do a live chat here on Friday nights at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sign up for this Friday. Go on my community page. Check out the link. The link is there. Sign up. Hit the bell so you get a reminder so that you remember on Friday to join us for a cocktail happy hour or coffee or tea, whatever you're drinking, while I read to you Chapter 4 of Sex in the City. Uh, by Candace Bushnell. We've been having a super fun time with that. The book club members are all having a terrific time. The book is actually quite funny. It's a collection of essays and, and columns that Candace Bushnell wrote in one of those magazines that she wrote in, in the 80s. I don't know if it was The Observer or something else. You can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, but we've been enjoying it quite a lot. It's been a lot of fun. And I basically just um, read to you and discuss the book and it's just a good time. So every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, you can join me there. And I hope to see you there. So don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and hit that alarm bell for the book club on Friday night. Take care, everybody.